As you know, picnic and grilling season is in full swing, and we don't want to ruin the good time by getting sick. That's why Chris Salter, Environmental Health Division Director at the Durham County Department of Health, is here to share how we can stay safe. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, let's start with food prep. We all know we need to wash our hands, but there's a method to it, right? That's right. Um, before any food prep begins, everyone should always wash their hands thoroughly. That, remo that re means removing all jewelry, including bracelets and watches. Mm -hmm. You should rinse your hands with clean water, soap up really well, vigorously rub them together for at least 15 to 20 seconds, and then rinse again, going all the way up onto the wrist and the forearms. With my six-year-old, I tell her to say her ABCs yes, that's while good, she's yes. washing to make sure she does it for yes. long enough. Okay, if we're not going to be near a sink, if we're at a picnic or something like that, you have a great suggestion on how we can make sure we wash our hands outside. Yes, that's right. We can use containers like this that have a spigot. You can fill them up with clean water and set them out in the sun, and that will help warm the water. And then you can, some of these have spigots that stay on, and you can flip them and they continuously run. Hmm. You can use that as your water source, again, using soap, plenty of, of uh, clean water, and then a very importantly, you should always use a clean towel or a clean paper towel. Gotcha. To okay, when we're taking food out to advance, it's a good idea to prepare them at home in advance, right? Yes, that's correct. Um, there's not too many sanitary places to uh, prepare food outside, so mm -hmm. do it in your kitchen where you know it's clean and safe. Okay, and also um, separate coolers for drinks and perishable things. Why do we need to do that? Well. When you're out outdoors and it's hot, everybody wants a drink, a nice yeah. cool drink. So the drink cooler, if you separate your drinks into a separate cooler, the drink cooler will, will be the one that gets open and closed a lot. Kids will run up and their hands are dirty, they yeah. just reach in. So you don't want them touching the food and stuff. You don't want the perishable food exposed to the hot temperatures as mm. much. So keeping it closed will help keep it cold. Okay, and what kind of um, suggestions do you have for picnic and outdoor events for packing the food? Well, always use sealable containers and Ziploc bags. Um, that helps prevent cross-contamination. It also protects the food from water damage. Um, you also should look at possibly thinking about using prepackaged foods. Mm. They're always sealed and, they're, and a lot of them are pre-washed, so right. it makes it easier. Okay, you've got a thermometer here. That is so important when we're taking food outside, isn't it? It is very important, uh, especially when you're cooking on a grill. There are several um, examples of thermometers. Um, the easiest ones to use are the digital. They, okay. they, they react within seconds from uh, being probed into the food. Um, and there's a couple of examples there. Um, one thing that you need to remember when you use what we call metal stem thermometer. Yeah, that's what I have. Yeah, sometimes they have a little dimple that's very high up on the shaft, and if that's not inserted all the way into the food, you uh -huh. won't get a correct reading. So Ooh. remember that. And also, uh, another thing that's very important, if you're cooking burgers and things mm -hmm. that are thin on the grill, you need to remove it from the heat source and then temp it, because if it's thin and you stick the thermometer in, uh -huh. you're actually reading the grill temp. I've never even noticed that little yeah, nugget. I'm going to have to go home and look for that. Okay, let's talk about produce. You say melons. They have a lot of stuff on them. We have to really watch them. Well, yes, melons have been implicated in a lot of foodborne outbreaks in the last 10 years or so, and they're grown on the ground. We know there's a lot of bacteria and stuff on the ground. They're handled a lot in the field, and not everybody in the field has a place to wash their hands. Melons and tomatoes and green leafy vegetables are also considered potentially hazardous once they have been cut. Okay. So you need to clean the surface of these types of produce before you cut them. And after you cut them, they have to be kept cold. That's 41 degrees or lower to mm -hmm. be safe. Is what, running something produce under the sink enough or do you need to no, scrub it's, it? No, it's not. There, there are vegetable brushes and it's important to remember if you use a brush, that you use a soft bristle brush and not put a lot of pressure. If you use a stiff br bristle brush, you may push contamination down through the mm. skin and into the flesh. Okay, so when growing up, I always ate the strawberries while I was picking them. Yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> That's not, not a good idea, right? No, no. Well, <laughs> even if, if you're not concerned about pesticides, like in an organic farm, there are still lots of contaminants out there, like bacteria that are spread by birds, reptiles that are crawling oh, on those strawberries. Yeah, so right. it's always a good idea to wash before you eat. Okay, now I feel sick. Okay. <laughs> when it comes to marinating, don't do it on the kitchen counter, right? No, marinating should be done in a controlled environment inside the refrigerator. If you're going to take it out into the field with you and cook it or grill or something, mm -hmm. 
keep it on ice, but also remember this, if you're gonna uh, brush or baste while you are cooking, mm -hmm. reserve some of that marinade before you put the meat into it. That way you won't be introducing contamination every time right. you brush. Okay, a lot to think about. Thank you so much for the great reminders. You're welcome.